morning everybody it's Saturday uh, looks like February 10th just a couple things before we get started today we're almost done with the interior which leads the to the next question what are we going to do next we're going to do the exterior obviously next uh, which would consist of skinning it windows doors vents and then I'm going to do the lighting the lighting on the trailer I'm going to reconfigure the tongue to have some kind of tray on the front and lengthen the tongue so there's room there for like a generator, a toolbox, uh, a gear bag, stuff like that, just so that that stuff can go on the tongue. I'd like to somehow keep keep it kind of lockable so that the generator is locked inside and it can kind of run while it's locked on the tongue. A couple things, um, had a couple people ask me some questions this week. The first one is what kind of software do I use to do the videos? And um, I used to use Adobe Premiere back in the 90s when like Windows 98, you needed like video drivers and you had to swap them in and out and stuff. Um, so I've always kind of held that Adobe Premiere at um, the highest standard and I've always looked for something like that that has a timeline and I can cut and paste and do things like that. I don't like working with a storybook format, I just like a timeline. You can lay everything out, see where it goes. So I use Pinnacle Studio 21. So far it's been pretty good. Um, yeah, I have a, a, a Dell laptop that um, because it is a Windows machine, it's always gonna give you headaches, unlike a Mac. I just didn't wanna spend a couple thousand dollars on a Mac, probably would've been the way to go for video editing. So that's what I have, Pinnacle Studio 21. Another person asked me this week, what kind of mic do I use? Well, I don't use a mic, I just use a GoPro Hero 3. Uh, it's a few years old, I got for Christmas a long time ago, and then I drilled holes in the front of the case. Even though it's not a waterproof case, because the front doesn't have any holes, it does limit the sound when you're looking at it in front of it and i think in the video very first video where i'm sitting on the couch after we went and bought the trailer when i turn the camera around and i face it you can tell the audio is really diminished so at that day i drilled four holes in the front which you're seeing right here on this little video so that answers that question the last couple questions was uh christopher caban i think is his name asked did you end up tapering the bottom edge of the slanted roof and how did you get that to overlap and i think he's talking about where it goes from the top of the roof down to the lower portion that bottom part right there what i did was i overlapped i ran the bottom part of the roof all the way in and i overlapped the top with the one that's at an angle in case it rains it just would naturally flow over and then the other question he asked was um what thickness were you using for the exterior walls? And I'm thinking the plywood on the outside. It's thin, it's 3 16 I went thin because I wanted it to be light. Um, and then I got two by three uh, framing in here, which you guys have seen. And then the interior is just really thin paneling. It's not even a quarter inch thick at Lowe's that we talked about in previous videos. <clears throat> so thanks for the questions. Um, one cool thing is I've been debating and debating and debating on do I do aluminum? Do I do um, fiberglass? I've even looked into vehicle wraps. Some guys do vehicle wraps. Those, are, those three are all kind of pricey. In the back of my mind, I've always been thinking about a roll-on skin and people tell me don't use bed liner because they crack, they this, they that, and I've, I've read some stuff where some bed liners do crack after a while on the roof. <clears throat> this thing's going to be stored indoors. The only time it's going to see outside is when we use it. So instead of sitting outside and um, getting exposed to the elements, it's going to be indoors protected until I coat it. So what I've done is I did a ton of research. I know what it takes to do the aluminum, very simple. And I was set on the aluminum for a while. Then the other thing was the fiberglass. Um, I was into that for a while. I was dead set on the fiberglass, but then I remember all my old fifth wheels after a few years, the fiberglass bubbles and fades and just does weird stuff. Um, let's just keep that stuff coated with a good wax. Then I got a hold of a company called Durabac, and I actually had about a half hour discussion online with one of their techs uh, yesterday. And their product in every review kills everybody else's bedliner products and um, super durable and I talked to him and told him what I was doing what I was building what it was made of and he told me how to prep the exterior and how to do it right and I think I'm going to use the Durabac and I'm going to do the whole thing um, and then I'm going to skirt the bottom with some diamond plate so it looks cool and I'll put something up front like a diamond plate real diamond plate not the facade stuff 
and uh, to, to act as a rock shield and stuff. So <clears throat> that's it for now. I've got this thing out here. It's windy and warm. We're just going to get to work on redoing this cheesy door right here to make it look like that cool one on the back. And then from there, I'm going to button up the top. And then the next thing is going to figure out uh, bed configuration. It's going to be three of us in here, uh, me, my daughter, and my son. So the two, the big body and the littlest body will fit in here no problem. But we have a big body and a little body, and then we have an in the middle, 15, 16 year old body. So I got to figure this one out. So are you ready to get started? Yeah. All right, enough with the talking. Let's get started. Okay, so um, this is what we got done. Got that back done, the top, uh, almost done. I got to trim out those lines between the fake paneling and the fake diamond plate but that's pretty much the way it's going to go going to figure out a way maybe put some baskets in those cubby holes so with clothes in them so they don't slide out um, but as as you saw i got this door done here i went ahead and i redid this one also remember what it used to look like and so i got that one all done nice and tight so that i, I like a lot um, that's really all I got done was that the uppers up there that upper stuff um, <clears throat> the interior is really close everybody so we're excited so I'm gonna quit for the night and uh, go watch Supercross and pick up tomorrow and probably tomorrow will be it for the interior here just doing some quarter round on the bottom all right Saturday night we're out of here Isn't that what life's about sometimes, just being a kid? All right, everybody, so uh, it's like 2.30, Sunday, and I'm just trying to figure out what to do up here, and it kind of work, it's kind of working. I gotta get a piece of trim in there to clean that up, but um, I have to keep remembering I'm not building a custom coach for like Elvis or something. It's just, so I'm trying not to be a perfectionist. In a lot of cases, I'm just not a perfectionist. So <clears throat> I have to cover my mistakes, like with trim and stuff. So I wouldn't have put this cord around here, but this goes down further on that side than this side. So when I line up the roof, when I line up that one board going across, on the other side, the diamond plate was sticking below. So I just... Uh, fixed it by putting that cord around all the way across. <laughs> okay, back to work. All right, so we are actually pretty much done with the interior. A um, couple little tiny things I still want to work on. Well, let's show you what I did. I boxed in those shelves so they're deep. That fascia board on there, I, I put some real tall ones so there's some depth into those. So we could just put our clothes and stuff in there. And then on this cabinet, I still want to work. I want to pull all that stuff out of there. And then I want to paint and do something in there so it looks finished. And then um, do something just so it looks finished when you open it. And then I might put a little containment wall in there so that stuff stays in there. That's our heater since we took up that space for storage. And then on this other cabinet over here... I'll show you what we ended up doing. We got it looking good, just like the back one. And um, I, I put that little border there so that this stuff's all contained. The the uh, power cable for outside, the battery stuff. Got a couple set of jumpers in there. And then that'll be for food, like bread, cereal, stuff we can just put in there for a night or two. And I left that one open so I can get to the propane tank and stuff. But I want to do something like that on the back also. So that's looking good. And... Um, Everything's working, yeah. right? We're pretty much done. Should we show them the zone Well, I was going to surprise them with that, but now that the garage light went off, we can surprise them. So we have a surprise for everybody. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and kill those lights. Hey, so we got some LED strips. Do demo. <laughs> we can do different colors. Yeah. See? Orange, red, uh, white, green, 
aqua, pink, blue, and then when things get popping in here, yeah, Emma. when we crank the music, we can have some fun. So these are pretty cool. These are just battery operated uh, little strips that I got off of Amazon. Um, I'll show you. See, they're operated by three double A's, those little packs, and they work off one remote. And then I just unplug them and put the packs away when we're traveling, when we're going to travel. So, but even like during the day, you can just kick back and, you know, have them on what color you want there. Blue. I would always turn them on blue when they come back. In. Pretty much done with the interior. Stoked. A little more things to do, you know, trim out the windows, that other stuff we talked about. Um, so, like I said before, I am going to do a bed liner product on the whole exterior, roof, side, and everything. I'm going to talk to Duraback again tomorrow while I'm at work because I have a couple other questions like can I put decals on that, can I do some accent painting, or if I need to do a color scheme, do I need to use two different colors? And then, do I, can I do one on top of the other, or do I have to, you know, stop at a line, continue, and then what if it's dry, and will it seal? A lot of questions I have. So, let's see, September, let's see, October, November, December, January, and part of February. A little over four months working on the weekends. We've got the interior done. We've got the trailer built, wheels and tires on, interior done. Um, so we're getting close. So next weekend's President's Day weekend, and I'm thinking that I'll probably be able to do the exterior then, or at least get it ready, and then maybe have some family time that I have been neglecting my family. <laughs> We've been working on this thing every spare minute. Every second. Yeah, so. Thanks for all your help, you guys, that have your own channels, that I've been able to snag your ideas. Thanks for all the cool comments. Thanks for all my bros, my relatives all you people that i know that say how cool it is and maybe i'll show it to you one day come by your house and so, hi jacob if you watch us he'll watch all right everybody that's enough talking next time we'll be doing the exterior have a good week